Good morning, everybody. It's Friday, it's 10 o'clock. That can only mean one thing going forward. It's time for So Crafty TV. Now, this is really exciting. We're going to be live every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday from 10 o'clock till 12 o'clock. We're gonna have products for you. We're gonna have demonstrations. We're gonna have guests. Uh, we're gonna have some free downloads available. And um, there's gonna be all sorts of things going on as we progress as the channel. Today, you've got me. My name is Abigail. I've been stitching for an awfully long time. I won't say how long about 30 years, um, but I, yeah, I've been stitching for a very, very long time. So I'm absolutely thrilled to be on So Crafty TV as a presenter. I've got some technology next to me here, so hopefully we can have some interaction between us. Any questions, any comments, all that sort of good stuff. So I'll just make sure, yeah, we're, we're streaming fine. So, what is So Crafty TV? We are an online based channel. We are live on Facebook, our Facebook page, So Crafty TV. Um, we are also currently streaming live on YouTube. So hello if you're watching us over on YouTube. I promise I will get to any comments over there as we go through the show. But the channel on YouTube is actually my channel until So Crafty TV has their own channel. So we're streaming over on Abigail. So if you prefer to watch over on YouTube, that's where you can find us, or if you prefer to watch on Facebook, we are So Crafty TV. So I'm going to basically take you through everything that I've got on the show today, and then we're going to go straight into the demonstrations. So I'm really excited, but first of all, I just want to show you a quick video all about So Crafty TV. There was a bit of information there. You'll notice that anything over £25 you get free postage and the website is www.sc-tv.co.uk and if you do want to email us we are hello at sc-tv.co.uk or you can comment on the live streams and I'll get to I'll get to them. I've got them over here hopefully on my laptop. Um, if I just press on to that. Oh you can hear me. <laughs> You can hear, I'll just mute that. So I'll just move that over there. And then if anyone has any questions or comments, I'm on the Facebook page currently, and then I'll switch over to YouTube as we go through the show. Right, so first things first, what have we got on the show? We have got these awesome pens. So they do come in a set of three. So these are novelty pens. You've got the knitting balls. You've got the tape measure and you've got the awesome sewing machine. Now, I love these pens because they're gel pens. So they are um, really very, very cute indeed. I'll bring them in so you can see them. So gel pens, they're not fabric pens or anything like that. They're gel pens. They're black ink. I find them really great to write with, actually. So you've got the knitting balls here. I'll just take the lid off so you can see. Really fine point, actually really good for writing. Uh, knitting ball, tape measure, and the sewing machine. Now the sewing machine is my favourite, that's mine. Uh, my, my, I use on a regular basis. But I just think they're really cute, really lovely novelty pens. So they are 6 99 for all three of those, which is a bargain, absolute bargain. Um, so you do get all three, it's not a pick and mix, you get three, so you get one of each design. It's not limited to one per person, and they do retail for twelve ninety nine for the three. So that is a bit of a bargain. Um, just pop those there. I do love that display. Don't you love that display? Really cute. But I'll move it to one side so you can see everything else I've got going on. Where should I put it? Over here. So the next thing I've got on is the June Taylor Quilt As You Go. This is the pet placemat. This is the cat one. I love June Taylor. I love Quilt As You Go. One of my demonstrations later on is actually going to be a crazy, um, crazy 
quilt crazy quilt as you go I guess that's what we'll call it uh, placemat but this is the June Taylor one which is really great because I'll open it up so you can see this one so you've got all your instructions on the back you've got everything that you need to know how to go through but it's really easy let me open it up so you can see this is your upside down pattern this is your pattern um, shall I bring it on the smaller camera so you can see there we are I'll put pens in the way but this is what you get okay so you can see all the lines on there and what you do is you start with number one so number one's in the center now your first piece is always right side up so you'll have your fabric right side up here exactly cut to size it does tell you in the instructions exactly what sizes you need so you don't need to worry about anything with this at all then you move on to piece number one which you place right sides together against so you move on to piece number two place right side together against piece number one and do a quarter of an inch seam allowance flip it over and carry on I've actually got one of these that I use for my pug I know that's a bit crazy because um, she's a dog but I really enjoyed making it as a sample so I just gave it to the dog <laughs> it to the dog I know um, so these are 5 dollars they actually retail for 8 95 so there's a three pound saving on there am I gonna get this back in the packet nobody knows <laughs> so what do you think to our studio it's pretty awesome isn't it it's a lovely lovely place to be able to I've, I mean I've already covered the floor in fabric as you can probably imagine with me you know what I'm like um, so that's the June Taylor quilt as you go placemat I can't stress to you how brilliant June Taylor products are once you get one you're gonna want more and more and more and I actually met Jill who is the um, creative brains behind June Taylor recently at the stitches um, I was gonna say festival but it's not is it the stitches show at the NEC and she was absolutely lovely um, I sort of sort I saw her in the distance I sort of sought her out um, and she was absolutely lovely and very very kind to me and, and showed me all the, the fabulous products that they've got coming up on June Taylor so that's really exciting and we do have um, a account with the main supplier of June Taylor so if there's anything that you think that you might like do comment let us know and um, we can get those products in right so the next thing we've got I'm just gonna get them from here we're running out of space so just grabbing these these are your glitter fabrics look at those gold and silver they're 4 dollars each but you do get two meters of fabric there is some shedding with this it's not like other glitter fabrics you might have seen there is some shedding and it's quite um, thin so it's I would say it's very much like a paper consistency just a bit thicker but what it means is it's really great for die cutting it's really great for applique um, this isn't going to wash so you can't put it on something like a jacket or trousers or something like that but you can do it on things around the house embellishments um, maybe you're putting it on a decorative display that's absolutely fine so you've got the gold option and you've got the silver option they are two meters long each and that I don't like how oh yeah two meters 40 centimeters so 40 centimeters in length and then two meters I would get it out I think it will probably sprinkle glitter oh let's do it let's go for the silver one let's go for it Whoops. sorry about the noise just pop that under there so each one comes tied so let's untie oh get ready look at that isn't that awesome so shiny so as I say it's quite thin it's a bit thicker than paper actually um, but you're gonna get shedding so again embellishments you're not gonna want to use this on your patchwork um, but it's so fun I'll tie this back up actually just let's keep neat let's try and start as we mean to go on <laughs> so we've got those I think you'll agree we all love those then we've got felt now this is 3.99 a roll and it's a choice of 
So you've got the red, you've got the grey, and you've got the brown. Um, each one is 45 centimetres by a metre. Now this is um, hobby felt, so it's quite thick. It's one... Oh no, this isn't the thick one. It's 1.5 millimetres. So let's open it up. The brown one. Let's open the brown one. I might need my scissors. Whoops, dropped it. I mean, the mess down there now is getting out of control. <laughs> so, we do get a fair amount on here. Let's have a look. Whoop. That's not even all of it. Oh, that's all of it. There we are, look. That's how much you're getting. Now, if you bear in mind that when you go to your craft shop, an A4 piece of felt is only about 75p-ish. Um, so, you are getting quite a bargain there. So let's, I'm just going to fold that up now. So keep neat, as I say, keep neat. Right, so let's have a quick um, whiz over to Facebook. Hello, everybody that's watching. Lovely to see you. Okay. So there your craft belts, choice of, okay? Then, whoopsies. Then, last but not least, you can hear the mess under the table, can't you? Last but not least, we've got the four-piece tool packs. So you've got the pink option, you've got the blue option. In here, you've got your, your large scissors, which I've got here. And then you've got your smaller scissors, which again, are you, they're constantly in use now. You've got your key ring tape measure. I love that. Who doesn't need a key ring tape measure? You know, you're out and about, you're at the craft shop, you want to measure how much fabric you might need. That's that. And then you've got your quick unpick. Oh, it is upside down. And then you've got your quick unpick. So it's a choice of the $4.99 a pack. So you've got the pink, which is exactly the same as the blue. So they're your choices. I love these. I really do love these. My children love the tape measures. Um, but as I say, I've got the um, got the pink scissors. I've got the blue scissors. I I use them. They they tend to live in my sewing bag, and they're the ones that I take out and about with me. Um, you know, they're, they are cheap, it's 4 99 so I wouldn't be too devastated if I lost them. I don't really want to take out my £20, £30 scissors, um, but if I'm taking these out to workshops or going around to any craft groups and things like that, if I leave them behind, I'm not going to be overly devastated, but yet they still do the job. Let's get a bit of fabric. I don't really want to use one of my hexagons. Hold on, I'll get this busy. And I'll switch you over so you can see over here. So these are the scissors. You can see how super they are. Ooh. Don't chop your finger, especially on the first live show. So, you know, you get it. You know how scissors work. But I just wanted to show you how um, sharp they were. Um, really just a useful bit of kit, to be honest with you. Right, okay, let's get into some demonstrations. I'm going to clear the decks a little bit, pop those over there. I'll just leave those there because I enjoy them. I enjoy them. Everyone got their cup of tea? Are you all ready for some demos? I'll just take a sip. Hmm, super. It certainly helps, doesn't having a cup of tea. Okay. So the first thing I want to demonstrate is a hexagon hot pad. Now it's not the same hot pad that I've demonstrated before that's a hexagon. So don't be put off if you've seen that demonstration before. This is something completely different. Um, it's just I sort of called it the same thing. Multiple hexagon hot pad. Maybe that's what I could call it. Um, so um, that's what we're going to make. You will need some heat resistant wadding so the ones that have got the silver sides if you want to use it as a hot pad if you want to just use it as a placemat or a decoration then you know your wadding or I'm gonna actually be using a foam because I like the structure and this is actually um, until you get to the binding this is a no iron project so if you are adverse to ironing and you don't like it um, you obviously don't have a magic pressing mat uh, we'll get on to that in another show, uh, but if you don't enjoy the ironing, this is something that you can do in your craft space. 
um, at your dining room table um, and it's no iron until you get to the binding. Oh, excuse me, let me just clear my throat. So let's get on. I'll just have a quick look over at YouTube. I can see some comments. Oh, Adrienne's wet ready for the demonstrations. <laughs> very good, very good. So we'll just have a quick look onto YouTube while we're here. But these are the hexagons. I've already cut them out. And actually, I've decided that I don't like the size. I think actually I want to have them a lot smaller. Um, Oh yeah, we've got lots of people watching over on YouTube. Hi, hi, hi everyone on YouTube. I'm just going to click on the stream so you might hear me for a second once I... Mm. Oh yeah, we've got lots of people watching over oh, on YouTube. Go. Hi, hi, hi everyone. I can't YouTube. mute it. I'm just going to click on the stream so you might hear me for a second once I... There, I've muted it. <laughs> uh, morning, Kim. Great to see you. Thank you so much for tuning in. Okay. Excellent. I'm thrilled about that. So back to... Thank you so much for tuning oh. in. Okay. Concentrate. I've got to keep looking because as I say, I want it to be interactive between us. So uh, it's important to just take a little moment and that's a little moment there where you can have a nice sippy cup of tea. Um, right. So as I say, I don't really like the size of these. I think they're far too big. Uh, for my hot plate, as you can see, well, they are far too big. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to trim them down. So if I lay them, I don't really need them in the same colour order, but it just keeps me on track. Let's just line them up ish. And I've also got a lot, so we don't need this many. I was just being very over enthusiastic about my hexagon cutting. I do love a hexagon, it has to be said. Right, okay, let's cut these ones first. And I've only also got my large ruler, a bit awkward, but right, so cutting these down, let's see how big I actually want them. I think I'm going to cut off, is an inch too drastic, do you think? Oh, it might be. I'll tell you what, I'll cut off half an inch and we'll see how that looks. So we'll just do, oh, shall we? Oh, I'll tell you what, it's tricky, isn't it? It's tricky. Yeah, we'll cut off half an inch. So, uh, let's do that. Once I've trimmed these up, I'll let you know how many you need for your projects. Uh, have I done that one? No. Half an inch, half an inch, that one. You know what's going to happen, don't you? I'm going to trim one I've already trimmed. We're going to end up going round and round in circles. So all I'm doing to trim these down, I'm just lining it up with my line on my mat, and I'm just taking it in half an inch. And then I'm turning it to the right, and then I'm doing the same again. Half an inch. Okay. That's quite, I wish to prefer, I think I, I'm going to go smaller, you know. I think I'm going to take an inch off every one. So another half an inch off here. I'm doing lots at a time, so that will save some time. Yes, I'm already preferring it smaller. The great thing about this is that they all overlap and the, you're going to do some fancy stitching. If you've got um, a machine that doesn't have many fancy stitches, a zigzag stitch is absolutely acceptable. Um, I think a zigzag stitch on this would look perfect. Um, so don't forget what I said about the uh, thermal lining, if you're going to use this as a hot pad. I'm actually just going to have this on my um, coffee table, so I'm not overly bothered about that. I'm just going to use some foam. So, right, I'm much happier with this size now. So let's cut the pink one. So that was an inch off. It's such a shame, isn't it, because they're so lovely. I'll probably save some um, in the big size, because I do like them. If you're struggling to cut the hexagons, 
um, just download a template online and um, and cut it out. Or if you go into Microsoft Word, you can actually import a hexagon and then print it off, and then you've got a paper template. So don't be put off by the hexagon. They're very straightforward. Line this up. And the last one, oh, it's Diddy. Diddy point. Yes, they're great. Really like those. Really happy. So purple ones. Again, same thing. Line an inch off. I tell you what, I'm going to get in so much trouble because I'm making so much mess on the floor. It's all right when it's your own craft room. Does anyone else do that? Throw your bits of fabric on the floor. I don't know who I've got that from. So, a little bit more about me, I suppose. Um, I do have a company, Avid Crafts. You'll notice that when you're looking at the So Crafty TV website, it's currently under the Avid Crafts umbrella. Um, that's until their own website is um, completed. So they are using the server over at Avid Crafts, which is absolutely fine. So when you check out, you will get confirmation from Avid Crafts and you will be paying Avid Crafts, but your products will be coming from So Crafty. Right, I'm going to grab my foam, which is now covered in bits of fabric. And I'm just going to roughly cut out a piece. What you need to do is start off with a square piece. So we're going to have this eventually, it's going to be a circle. But if you start off with a square piece, it keeps you all, you know, you don't need to worry about the edges. You go to that later. At the minute, it's all about the placement, okay? So... What you're going to do, I've got the June Taylor Quilt Basting Spray. You could use fusible wadding if you want to. You can use um, a fusible interfacing on your hexagons um, and cut them out, fuse it on, cut it out, and then do that. I'm just going to use the basting spray. I would recommend that you use a fusible lining first because it's going to be less messy um, and it's going to be a lot easier. So we're going to start with... Our centerpiece, I'm going to go for this lovely fabric. I'm using all Tilda's here. So this lovely one. I'm just going to spray the back. You could equally spray your foam. And I'm just going to place that one down. Okay? Simple. I'm going to end up absolutely covered. So that's your first one there. I'm going to now place a few down without sticking them because I want to be able to see, you know, if it's working right. So what you need to do now is taking your next piece, you're going to overlap by about a quarter of an inch over the top here. Then when you get your next piece, you're going to overlap both of those seams. Okay. So you will see raw edges. Now that is why we use the fancy stitching or the zigzag stitch because you're going to stitch over these. It's going to look absolutely beautiful. You can, if you want to, put some fabric on the back so you're uh, stitching as you go, or you can back it afterwards. Up to you entirely. I'm going to back it afterwards, uh, just for ease of demonstration purposes. So that I'm quite pleased with that. So what I think I'll do is I'll spray the wadding this time to see if there's much difference. I can't remember now if I had the pink at the top. <laughs> so we'll place that one down and then we're placing the second one down. Again, you're going to now have to overlap both of those. So not just the centre, but both of those. Because you don't want it but to butt up. You, can, you could have it butting up if you like, but it makes it a lot easier to stitch. If you don't like to use any form of interfacing, you could pin these if you want to. So that's the next one. So I'm now going to, I like the spraying the foam actually, I like that. What we'll do is we'll, I want it to be a bit, um, you know, higgledy-piggledy. I don't really want to have, um, which way should we, oh, I think we'll just carry on going around with this. I'm going to spray the foam again, I, I, I like that. So overlapping both, keeping the edges straight and using quarter of an inch. 
So that's the next one. And then I'm going to take my green and overlap both of those. Like, not quite like that. I want to make sure that the points form a nice edge. This doesn't have to be completely accurate. Don't, don't be worried. The great thing about the June Taylor spray is you can lift off and re remove and you know replace. So a pink. Line that up. And then the green. Now what's great is when you're doing it like this and not fusing it straight away, you can see if you've lined it up properly. So for example, I can see I've slightly gone too far in with this one. Place that down. Place the next one on top. And then this one is not is too far away from the edge. So we'll just move that up. So the spray is good if you're not as confident, that's for sure. So I think I'm pretty happy with that actually. Just move that slightly and I'll show you. So just pressing it down. So that's what we've got so far. So you can see. Now I'm going to do my next row. So adding on this one. I really enjoy this purple actually. I think I would have liked to have some more purple in here. Like more random. But if you've got, um, this, the, that's the tricky thing with the three colours. If you've got more than three colours, you'll get more of a random effect. Um, with the three colours, it's very difficult not to get, you know, it, you will get into that routine of one in the centre, every other one on the outside. So um, probably go for more colours if you want to. And this is the last purple one I've cut, so I will cut some more. We're in no hurry. Like that. So I'll just leave you looking at that for a second. So that's the purple one. I really enjoy that, don't you? Do you think that that looks good? Um, I definitely do. I think that looks perfect. So that's the purple. You can hear bubble wrap, I'm just unpacking something. Yeah. Okay. So I'm going to cut some more purple ones. So if we remember, I did an inch. So let's do that on these ones as well. So lining up. and cutting off by inch. Turning it to the right, lining up with that centre line and cutting off an inch. Won't cut that very well. Turning round again. So what basically, this is really straightforward and simple, but when you get to the stitching is where you can really get creative. Obviously you can get creative with your colours and your the placement and you know what colour goes where. That's great fun. But that was an awful line I've cut there. But the fun bit is the stitching. Um, I don't know why I've cut that at such a strange angle, but we'll just... We'll go with it. I've got a very flat, <laughs> got a very flat bottom hexagon now. Did I have any more of those left? No. Well, that can be the edge, so we're going to trim that anyway. It's fine. Right. I'll clear some space. Keep tidy. Pop those over there. Cover on. So, because I cut these a bit dodgy, as you can see, that's now going to be my outside edge. So if I adhere these on. I'll adhere them on like that. And then, because I'm actually using, let me get it, I'm actually using a uh, saucer. So if I line that up, 
there's only a bit of that I'm going to see. So actually that's worked out conveniently. A little advert for Dunny on there. <laughs> so fill in this gap. Like that. This gap. I think that that will be enough because that should now have filled up all those gaps for the plate, which it has done. You can go bigger. You can go as big as you want. Uh, just be wary of how you're going to get it under your machine. Uh, I find this size is definitely a good size for under the machine. Right, so now I'm going to use one of my pens just to mark out. These aren't fabric pens, so if it doesn't mark on here, it's not the pen's fault. It's just this is what the one I've got to hand. Um, as you know, sometimes pens work super on paper, and then you come to use them on fabric, and because of the you know what they're drawing on it doesn't work very well as it happens this is this is going okay right pop the plate onto the board right we'll cut this out use my pink scissors i think so what i do is i roughly cut out first get rid of the bulk Now the reason why I, whoop, I'm gonna make, I'm making such a mess on the floor. It sort of looks like a football, actually, doesn't it? So if you've got any gentlemen in your life that uh, have got particular colours, like uh, our John, he would have um, yellow and green. But obviously you can go random. You don't need to start your first hexagon here. You can start your first hexagon here if you like and build out that way. I enjoy the hexagon in the centre. I have to say. So you've got your hexagon there. Now what we're going to do is we are going to stitch every line. So I'm going to go for, what am I going to go for? I'm just going to go for a normal zigzag, I think, because I do like a zigzag stitch. You can do a tighter stitch. You can do, you know, a longer stitch. I'm going to have a little test first. So let's grab a scrap, which are all down here, because I've thrown them all away. So, bring in the machine, as you can see there. I'm going to test my stitch length to see what I want to start with. Let's have a look. What's this one like? No, too long. So, let's change it. Yes, okay, so I've got a stitch length of one and a half now, um, and I much prefer that. I think that looks, so if I show you, I started with there and I moved down to one and a half stitch length, so I do like that zigzag. That's quite nice. Let's have a little look and see if we've got any questions or any comments. Um, uh, can anyone else see your head? <laughs> my head is currently cut off yes it's meant to be just because I'm just showing you down here my head is this is the close-up camera the bigger camera is uh, on the other side but you're all watching so I'm absolutely thrilled for you all to join me uh, it's, it's absolutely lovely uh, right so as I was saying that's the stitch length I'm going to go for um, I'll just show you how the larger camera, so this is the normal camera, um, this is what I'll be talking to so you can see me, and then the other camera is for the more close-up work at the table um, where I can make crazy faces and curse when things go wrong and you can't see my head. Uh, but, so this is how far we've got so far, now I'm going to stitch every line. Um, what you will do is you will need to have, when you do your binding, that's going to be bias binding because you need to go around the curve here. I've got a binding tutorial on my YouTube channel. So if you want to have a look at how to make your own bias 
finding, then watch that on the on my YouTube channel, um, or I'm sure we'll do more binding as the shows progress. But for today, I thought, let's not make bias binding. It's a bit much for... And Diana, may I say, it's lovely to see you. So thank you for your question. Um, yes, I didn't think we would venture into binding today um, as I'm here by myself uh, doing this demonstration alone. Alone, just me, just me. Um, I've got Yasmin joining us as well and Sandy and Christine. Uh, lovely to see you all. Thank you so much. I will check over on YouTube again. I know that it's it's not the best to see me down here fiddling away, but um, it's the interaction. We want that interaction with you. So if it means I've just got to take a little moment to pause, what I'll do is I'll just play you uh, an information video and uh, whilst I'm loading up YouTube. brilliant video tells you everything you need to know so we've got some people watching on YouTube again you'll probably be able to hear it uh, when I load it up I'm just having a look oh there we go yes you're talking about my face no yes you're definitely not meant to see my face when I'm there uh, perhaps I shall go in uh, I shall bring things more towards the camera but hopefully you can see my face now so hello to everyone watching over on YouTube it's lovely to see you um, don't forget if you've got any questions uh, Kimberly and Liz lovely to see you I say see you I do feel like I am seeing you um, but let's close that up okay so we're gonna carry on stitching over here so I've got red thread in here now I've got red thread because I like you to be able to see what I'm doing um, which is the sort of sometimes it can be a bit of an annoying thing with that with demonstrations because sometimes we can't actually use the thing afterwards because the priority is for you to see what we're doing okay so I'm going to use a red thread so you can see it on here if you had these colours yourself, you might go for a lovely green thread. You might go for a pink or a darker reddish purplish colour. You might go for a white. Um, but I'm using red so you can see. Have a nice sip of my cup of tea. I hope you've all got your cup of teas. And I can see the comments, which is absolutely wonderful. It's lovely. Right, so I'm going to start. It doesn't really matter. I'm going to probably start in the centre so I get those ones secured. But I'm doing a zigzag and I'm just going to move this from under the table. More junk that I brought with me. <laughs> it's terrible, isn't it? We've got all sorts, all, bring all sorts of things. You know what it's like though, you take everything with you. So, zigzag stitch. It's not a race, go as fast or slow as you like. So, just straight over that line. And then turn round. Actually, do you know I love the red? I love the red. Next one. Oh, that's a surprise. I think you're going to like the red too. I'll do this line. I'll do this line and then I'll um, show you. No, I'll do round the whole hexagon and then I'll show you. See, there's me thinking it wouldn't work. And I've got just a little bit of lift up there, so just before that goes, I'm just going to lift that foot up and just readjust. I'll do one back stitch only one I don't want to affect the design and also if you've secured this down already that back stitch probably isn't going to be necessary because you've got um, just decorative and 
That's fine. Oh, everyone. Can you see the red? I love it. I love that red. That's made me really happy, actually. <laughs> How crazy is that? That's made me very happy indeed. Okay, so carry on to the next one. I'll put you on um, large screen so you can see what I'm up to. So I've actually lost my thread there, so it might come on thread again. Now. now I'm going to take that off now. If you've got a machine that um, cuts the thread off, you'll cut it off there. And I always cut the back thread as well so we don't get any, see that's what the back looks like now. You're there now, aren't you? <laughs> so we don't get any um, overlap. I'll move you back, you don't need to see. Yeah, the, I know Maggie, the red's great, isn't it? I'm really surprised. Actually, it's, it's more like a, I guess it's more like a maroon, so I guess it does go with that after all. Um, so next one, I'm going to start from the centre this time. But of course you've got decorative, do, don't, don't, you know, don't stick to the zigzag if you don't want to. Get those decorative stitches. That's what makes this a really quick and easy project. So now I'm going to go down this bit here. Now it's a small bit, so I'm just going to mind my fingers as I go. Lift it up. Trim. Bring that in so you can see. I'm really enjoying that. So that's what the back's looking like. That's the front. Just trim those threads. I'm going to keep saying that. Right, next one, let's go from here. Oh yes, right, okay, brilliant. This is coming together better than I could have thought, actually. So really pleased with that. Next one. The great thing about the show being two hours is I really can take the time to demonstrate something from start to back. Um, watching on TV, YouTube, sound out sync with picture, quite amusing. Oh gracious. You must have missed my little dance there. No, just, just kidding. <laughs> so with this one, I'm just gonna twist and go down. You can run off the edge if you like. I, I haven't ever done that before, but Jenny Doan said I could. <laughs> so I do. Not me personally, she didn't say I personally could, um, but I was watching one of her videos and she said you could run off the edge. Now I haven't positioned this one very well, if you can see here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to stitch over it as if I had and then I'm going to trim it back. So, starting where it should have ended, should have started I should say, I'm going to follow it down to the point. Keep the needle down and twist. Run off the edge. So if you can see here, I've now got an overlap. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to trim that back. So just folding that out of the way, and I've got the flap there, I'm just simply trimming it back. A little bit more. Folding it back. And it's like it never went wrong. So there we are. Oh, who's just said that? Sandy, free motion on this. You are completely right. That would look super. Ah, oh, some free motion flowers. Yes, free motion on this would be amazing. I'm almost a bit annoyed that I didn't think of that myself. 
that's again why we've got the interaction so I can take on your comments I can let everyone else know if they're not reading the comments what you've said um, so Sandy says do some free motion absolutely okay. uh, where have I not stitched over oh, here So the weather here at the moment is absolutely beautiful, the sun is shining, uh, we're in sunny Cambridgeshire, which is quite a rarity these days that it's sunny. Uh, how many lines have I got left? Two here. Okay. Heed your own advice, Abigail, and trim your threads. I know that gets so boring for me to say, but actually, if I don't say it, I don't do it. Um, so you've got to meet me when I'm about to say trim the threads. I won't feel offended. So don't forget, you can email us. Um, your emails will be responded to within 24 hours. Hello at sc tv. Dot co uk and the website is www.sc-tv.co.uk I've actually only got two lines to go which I'm more than happy with One. Show me your threads. Two. Three. Wowzers. So let me just leave you with that for a second so I can just grab something. So that's got the zigzag stitch on. I'll bring it in a bit further, a bit closer. Honestly, the mess I have made down here on this floor. So can you see? Bring that in a bit closer so you can see. I'm really surprised about the zigzag. I didn't think that was going to work at all. Um, well, I knew the zigzag would work, but the red. I didn't think the red would work. So I'm more than happy with that. Okay. Oh, I made a right mess. So there's that. Let's cut back to me. Okay, so I'm just going to trim this off because it's going to annoy me. So now what you would do is you would add your backing fabric if you haven't already. Um, if you have already then you've quilted through. Like that. So I'm going to show you the back. A few stitches have been, oh, that's not, you can't see. A few stitches have been missed. That's just my machine. Um, so do excuse that. Nothing I can do about that, unfortunately, at this moment in time. Right, so that's the back. That's the front. Brilliant. Right, let's clean up my mess. So what you would now do is add your binding. Now, as I said at the beginning, keep those. As I said at the beginning, you would be doing bias binding. You can buy bias binding um, from your local craft shop or online. Or if you want it to match your project, you can make your own. Uh, have a look on my YouTube channel where there is a bias binding tutorial. Just trim, make it neat. 
But you know, I think if you were going to go down the football approach, or the soccer approach, depending on where you're watching, um, this could be really something fun to make for those chaps. Because often we, we struggle with making things for the chaps, uh, but this would actually be something quite good to make for them. But personally, I just love the hexagons. So you would put your bias binding on there. Again, have a look on YouTube for the tutorial on how to make the bias binding and then to how to add on the binding. I've got a few different ways of joining the binding together as well. So you can have a look and add that one. But that is just a simple little project to get you started. Again, I've just used a foam um, interfacing. You, If you want to use it as a hot plate, you'll need to use the uh, thermal lining which you know, uh, but best I just say. <laughs> oh, honestly. Things you do, eh? Right. That's, is that my pen? Yes, I don't want to take a pen from the display. But while we're talking about the pen, did you see how well that drew on the fabric? Obviously, that's not going to come off because it's not heat erasable, but actually, I was surprised because I didn't think that was going to work. Um, but if you want your own, um, they are on the website. Let me just load up the details for you. Yes, they are on the website. Three, so you get one of each, six ninety nine. Um, I've had them before for nine ninety nine, so they're six ninety nine. Uh, normal price is a twelve ninety nine, so saving, saving six pounds. No. Yes. Crazy. Brilliant. Uh, so you've got the. Let's bring them in so you can see. You've got the, that's mine. I'll keep hold of that myself, thanks. I need to put that somewhere because otherwise I'm gonna, I know I'm just gonna end up giving it away, aren't I? So you've got the yarn or the wool. You've got the tape measure. You've got the sewing machine. And they're just gel pens, but actually they're very good quality gel pen. They're just something nice to have, aren't they? Or if you know someone that's birthday's coming up or you've got a, you know, uh, well, I don't know, some, you know, events coming up where you need to take something. You'll be uh, talk of the town with these chaps in your craft stash. What else have we got on the show? Let's have a look. Don't forget about the June Taylor placemat. This is the cat one. That's the cat June Taylor placemat. I love quilt as you go. Love, love, love quilt as you go. Uh, June Taylor got me hooked on Quilt As You Go. Um, so you've got the, the, I say cat. I say cat. It's not called that. It's called a pet placemat. And it is a fish. So I keep saying cat, but it is a fish um, designed for the cats. Although my pug Esme has got the cat because I enjoyed making it. And um, I made it as a demonstration and now she's got it. And I would have bought it to show you, but it's filthy because the dog has it. So this is 5 95 normal price 8 95 saving three of your English pounds, which is brilliant. Then you've got the tool sets. I love these. I've had these before for 16 99 each, and they're currently 4 99 each. Uh, there's a pick of, so you can choose the blue or you can choose the pink. They're a four piece tool set. So you get your scissors, large scissors. You get your small scissors. You get your key ring tape measure, which I absolutely adore. I can't tell you how many of these I've got around the house because I adore them. Then you've got your quick on pick. So four ninety nine. So that's five pounds for four items. So that's £1.20 an item, isn't it? No, that's not right. What's £1.25 an item? Is that right? £1.25-ish? £1.25-ish. Yeah. £1.25. You're paying £1.25 for large scissors. £1.25. Now, these are great. These aren't rubbish quality. They're great. £1.25. £1.25 for your key ring tape measure. So excited, I threw it away. So you've got the choice there, you can choose between the pink or you can choose between the blue. I actually don't have a preference, that's why I've got both lots here. Can't really see that one. Ooh, got 
both lots. I don't really have a preference. Then we've got the glitter fabric. 4.99, two meters. It's either or, so you've got the silver or you've got the gold. We undid the silver earlier, so let's undo that again so we can have a look. I don't know if you can see. Um, there is shedding of this, so um, you'd be using it on things that you want to embellish, perhaps around the house. You wouldn't be using this on anything you want to wash. So clothing, no, no, no. Uh, but decorative things, wall hangings. Um, yes, yes, yes. Even if you're into your card making uh, for 4 99 for two metres. That's great value. Great value and really, really shiny too. Uh, then we move on to the final thing we've got on the show, which is the felt. One metre length. This is craft felt. Uh, it's 3 99 uh, it's 45 centimetres in width and then a metre in length. Hmm. So it's, that's really good, really good felt. Really useful. I'm just hold this up. I'm trying, you know, I'm trying. Carry on. I'll show you the mess I've just made. Just, I mean, just stuff in there. But that's what we've got on the show today. Those things. I'm just going to tidy up. Put everything over here. Oh, that's some mess I've made down there. Right, let's have a look. See what we've what's happening. Oh look. My friend Liam's just joined. Hello Liam. Very good friend of mine, Liam. Right, so that's your first one done. Um, let's have a check on YouTube so if there's any questions. Oh, Babs, <laughs> sorry, I'm so late. No, you're really, you're really fine. You're really fine. You can catch up at any time. That's one of the things uh, which is great about broadcasting on YouTube and broadcasting on Facebook is that the video is going to be available for you permanently. Um, it will be available for whenever you want to go back. So if you want to reference any of the demonstrations, if you want to go back and look at any of the products, the show will be there permanently. Um, so, but any comments obviously afterwards won't be seen uh, in live time, but it'll be there for you permanently. So we've shown you the products. So let's have another quick look at the information video. So we're going to move on to our next demonstration, which is a quilt as you go, say obsessed, a quilt as you go place mat. Now this is more like a mug rug. This is something for you to have your cup of tea, your cup of tea on, your biscuit, um, you know, your bits and pieces. But this is a crazy, um, I call it crazy quilt as you go technique uh, because you're just doing it wonky, jaunty, um, which means there's no rules. Um, you can go off. If you've only got a tiny piece of one particular fabric you like, you could be adding in a small piece. You don't have to have full length pieces. You can go <coughs> crazy like that. So we'll just show you that a bit up close. Love the colours of this. Love the colours of this. Look at that. So I did that with batiks. I actually haven't finished the binding off yet. So it's a bit on a wonk. But that's what you're going to be doing. Again, the binding, you can look on YouTube for that. Uh, Abigail, if you're watching on YouTube, you can actually save videos into playlists, so you can save it to your own binding playlist if that's what you wanted to do. So, to, to begin, backing fabric first, because you're quilting as you go, you need backing fabric. So, I'm just going to grab my fabrics. Oh, right. I've got some batiks. 
for some boutiques. Um, my backing fabric. I'll be honest with you, I don't want to use any of these as backing fabric because they're far too beautiful. Mm. I'll tell you what, we'll go for the... Mm, tricky. Which one should we go for backing? We'll go for... Yeah, let's take Okay. All right. Do it. <laughs> make, your, make, make your mind up. Now, the great thing about batiks is you can make a very, very, very varied piece, um, even if you have the same fabric, because it's all so beautifully coloured. Right, so this one is six and a half inches by nine inches. And you want to cut that exact uh, because you're quilting as you go. So, excuse my long ruler. Cut that exact. If I had a rotating mat, I would have rotated that. But I don't, so I can't. Just sort this. You cut that very well. Okay. Right, so that's my backing. I'm going to cut the same again in your wadding. You can use um, a wadding foam. Um, as you know, my preference is the foam. So that's the one I'm going for. So again, that's going to be the same, which was. Was it six and a half inches? I think I've just cut that to six inches, I'll be honest. I did. I've done six inches by nine inches. But the, the one I've already done is um, six and a half inches. So you may want to do either. Do whichever size you like. So cut that to size. This is where you will need some sort of adhesive. Um, that's why the June Taylor one is very good for this. I hope someone's got a sweeping brush. Because I've not made a mess down here. Right, I'm just going to adhere this on. So let's just, so you can actually see what I'm up to. There you go. Adhere this on. Like that. Now that's a bit wonky. Might just bear with me a second while I grab something. You can just have a look at that. So a six, that one is six inches by nine inches. But you will, if you want to make the same size as the one I showed, the finished sample, you will need to do six and a half inches by nine inches. I hope what I said just made sense. Right, so now we've done that, we want to cut some strips. So I do do two and a half inch strips with this. Um, as I say, you can do different sizes, but I find two and a half inch works because not only is it great to use up your, I don't like how that's not straight. It's great to use up your pre-cut strips, but it also means that your overlap when you're going, when you're going here, there and everywhere, you can actually overlap properly. And now I'll show you what I mean as we go. So let's cut some two and a half inch strips. I'll probably just do two. This is probably, to be fair, more than enough. So we've got two in that. Then we'll get the Aztec. I'll start from the other end because I've used that end as the backing. Just make sure that's lined up. Like so. And one. Now obviously you can use completely contrasting colours if you want to. You can go all out. Like so. Do you know, I think we need something else in there. What do we need? Hmm, what do we need? Do you know, this might sound a bit radical. Hold on. I wonder if this tilde would work with that. What do we think? Mm. Actually, I've got it. 
Hold on, I've got it. I like that green with that. Let's do that. I want to add in a different colour. So let's add in the green. So pop those up there. Let's add in the green. Let's see what you think. But to close the page, I have to log in again because you could hear multiple sounds. And I don't know why that is. I'm not technically minded in the slightest. I will say I've just seen that my friend Lottie has just passed her driving test. So that's absolutely fantastic. Congratulations, Lottie. See that you can hear me. Okay. Oh, Sandy, suggest taping a taping a bag to one side of the table and drop off the fabric into it. Oh, you're a bit smart, aren't you? That's very clever. Ah, I like that. Okay, so let's carry on. Have I frozen? Has the stream frozen? No, it hasn't. Again, as I say, I'm not technically minded, so don't... I don't know. I should just stay in my own lane. It's got nothing to do with me. Um, right, so... Two and a half inch strips. Let's needle off this edge. Right, just double, I'll have to double over this. Again, this is Tilda. Beautiful fabric. Really beautiful fabric. Need to knit off. Oh, I've thrown it on the floor again instantly. I haven't taken your advice, have I? I will do actually, I think next time, because um, I am making a headpiece. Right, so two and a half inch strips. There's a little bit of a cut out of that one, so we'll make sure we're aware of that when we're putting everything together. I'm just going to cut the one strip. That was an awful, awful cut. So I'm just going to do that again. Okay, that's better. That's better. Tidy up. Again, I'm using red thread so you can see what I'm doing. Uh, this is a quilt as you go project, so you would need to use a corresponding thread because you're going to be able to see that as soon as that comes on there. You, and you don't want to be seeing red, do you? Let's be honest, you want to see, you know, the nice thread. So uh, blue thread, white thread on here. It's lovely, isn't it? Lovely. Right, so we turn that the other way up. Now if you, I'll just change my stitch back. You'll remember what I said with the cat placemat at the beginning is you start with your first piece face up. So we're going to start with this uh, lovely starfish. With the first piece, I put that on straight so that we have something to work from. Um, straight up, and I also put that on the left hand side. And then we work across this way. You can start on the right hand side and work across this way if that's the way you want to do it up to you but the first piece needs to go on face up doesn't really matter so much with batik because either side will be fine but if you've got um, your tilde for example you'll need to have it face up first piece okay first piece face up next piece i'm gonna go for the green i am gonna go for the green you know so you don't cut this piece until you've measured it against your front piece because when you have it on an angle, if you cut this, this length, when you put it on an angle, it's not going to fit. You're going to have, especially if you want it to go like this, it's not going to be right. So place your first piece down, pin it if you want to, get your second piece and sort of, you, it needs to be faced down, okay, right sides together. But you always want to make sure you're covering this line because that's the line 
obviously if this fabric's a raw edge, you want to make sure you're covering it. So you're gonna take this fabric and you're gonna go from the top, go from the top, which is actually the bottom for you, but the top for me, um, and you're gonna sort out your angles. So you might want to have it just slightly off. You might want to have it an angle like this. So I'm gonna have it really jaunty angle. Then I'm gonna cut it. And I'm not cutting it against the foam in any way. I've got overhang here. Um, so that when I fold this over, there's enough here to do each piece. Can you see? You want overhang top and bottom. So when you fold, because you've got it on an angle, it's gonna come in to the fabric um, or, or away. So you need to make sure that you've got enough fabric either side. So I would say um, an inch, a good inch either side. And you can pin that into place. I haven't got any pins with me, but you're gonna go from top to bottom. You're gonna follow the new fabric line, okay? You're not gonna follow this line, you're gonna follow the new fabric line. I hope that makes sense. Bring in, again I'm using red, you would be using a nice corresponding thread colour. <laughs> so stitch from top to bottom. And run off as well, you don't need to. I would run right off. So there's your piece. And you're just simply folding that back. You've got a finger press. And that's what you've got okay so slightly on the wonk and you can see now that's why we come off each end have an overhang because this now because we folded it at an angle you've got a tiny bit there left if you'd have cut it here and stitched from there that would have been into your project okay so just remember so now we're going to use the aztec fabric oh i do like this aztec fabric um right side doesn't matter now we're going to do the opposite Start from here, go from here. I'm going to do that. Don't forget your overhang either end. And stitch. Okay, pin it if you want to. You don't have to go rogue. Pin. And you can start slightly off, off the foam if you want to. And remember to follow the top fabric line. Don't get confused and follow the under fabric, follow that top fabric line. This really is a scrap buster project, so if you've got um, some beautiful scraps, then this is the one for you. So, okay, you've got this bulk, you can Depends how you're going to use this. If you're going to use this as a mug rug, you're going to want to trim off that. If you're going to use this as decoration, doesn't matter. Also, if you're going to press this really well, doesn't matter. I'm going to just simply fold the project, if you can see. I'm going to just trim off against the line of the other fabric. Then, finger press. And that's how we're going. So at the back, you'll see, it's being quilted as we go, which I love that effect. Love, love, love that effect. Okay, next strip. Uh, the, I keep wanting to say seahorses. It's not seahorses, is it? It's starfish. Uh, so you can, obviously this is up to you, which way you go. I'm going to go for... I'm going to go even closer. I'm going to have that quite thin, I think. So trim. I might need more strips because I'm going quite narrow. Oh, I do like it though. Actually, do you know I'm going to go for the... Oh, should I go for the green? I'm going to go for the green. So oh, that's the one that's got the little cut in it. So I'm going to... I'm going to do, I'm going to go, I think 
about there. So I'm going to have Yes, okay. <laughs> well, the decision making process. This is why you start off with long strips. You don't want to pre cut your strips uh, because you need that excess and it's good to try to move things around, have a wiggle. So I'm going to do that one. That's the line I'm going to follow. I quite like that. I mean, it might not look great, but we're going to try. So stitch again, that top fabric. I'm going to increase my stitch length so it's not so slow. Oh, I think we're running out of bobbin. I can hear a bobbin issue. Mm. Doesn't look like we are actually. Stop for no reason. I think, to be fair, the sound it's making, we need to change the bobbin. Don't forget to run off a little bit. We need to change the bobbin in a second. Trim off your threads. Don't forget to trim off the threads at the back as well, because you want to make sure that's being kept neat. Uh, trim off the excess again by folding it up, and you've got this bit. Right. You can use a rotary cutter. Let's do that so you can see how that's done. So fold your project. Mind your scissors. And then... Make sure that the this is the fabric you want to cut, the blue one, that's the under fabric. You're going to fold everything over and then your seam allowance, not, just, you know, the edge of your fabric that you've not cutting, you're just going to trim with your rotary cutter. That blade's a bit blunt. I'm just getting there with my scissors. Okay. Fold it open. Yes, I really, really like that looking really good and the back's looking really good as well and I again I don't know what's going on with the red this morning but I don't mind it I don't mind it at all uh, right so we're now on to the starfish again starfish. you could carry on um, this line if you want you could uh, you know, fan it out um, I like that like that. What do you think? But so I'm going to go this way. So right side. Finger press. Make sure that's down. I'm going to go from the point again. Point to point. Trim. Again, you can pin. Don't think that you can't pin because you can. I'm just not. So you can actually go right across both. I don't really like that <laughs> but you could do that's what you want to do so following that top line again my bobbin might last for this one if not we'll just give it a change it's no big deal Have a look before we trim off. I'm loving it. So let's trim this. Fold back, remember, trim off the excess. I like the fact I've got all this time to show you. I'm not rushing, just taking it easy and showing you, which I just think is great. Right, so there's that one. Go back to the green. Have I got any more green left? Yes. bit though that's got the slit but if I stick no I don't want to use that thing stop this way very particular I am uh, right so this way oh no it's got two little uh, two little uh, slits in it just trim it okay right I think we'll go quite thin with this one you know like my decision making process what we're going to do is this no we're not forget it we're not doing that at all right, let's stitch that one. Oh yes i've definitely run out of it now just put some bobbin on 
So while I'm doing that, well, uh, cut to me because otherwise, what do you see? Nothing. Right, so we're back again on Monday. So we're going to be on Monday, Wednesdays and Fridays. You're not going to be able to hear me now, so while I'm doing the bobbin, talk amongst yourselves. <laughs> Does anyone else hold their bobbin like I do? I don't know why. It would do it itself, but I just hold it. Uh, oh, now I've run out of thread. Don't worry, I've got another one. I would actually prepare. Uh, so don't forget you can find us at www.sc slash, not slash, dash tv.co.uk or you can contact us hello at sc what's that one it's an odd thread uh hello at sc-tv.co.uk right re-thread the machine i have to say my eyesight is getting more wor worse and more worse terrible grammar worse and worse and I'm finding that I'm using the needle thread on the machine a lot more and I don't know why I didn't use it before to be honest because it's so easy I just I don't know, just didn't but now I'm using it all the time right get rid of that go on is it a tea break time it's nearly out of tea now it's cold Right, so following that top line again. No pause, I'll put I'll move you over. There we are. Okay. Switch. What do you think? Love it. Right, what are we doing now? Aztec. This is probably, is it going to be our last layer? No, I think we'll have one more after this. So, go from there to there. Oh, I haven't trimmed off my excess. I haven't trimmed off my excess. So let's just get rid of that. You'll thank me for trimming it off uh, because when you've got your cup of tea on it, if you've got too much bulk, um, then it won't be stable. Uh, Aztec. Face, remember always face down. Uh, like that. I really enjoy the Aztec actually. Such a boutique, but I call it Aztec because I think it does just look like. Aztec designs. Okay. Trim off that excess. Okay, I'm liking how this is coming together. You don't need your iron. I do want to do another one uh, because I do think, and do you know what? I might even do another one at the end there. So let's do this one. So we're going to do the green again. Uh, da, 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 which way should we do it? We need it that way. We need to stitch that way because I've got the, the only reason why I'm, I've got this little slit in it. If I start from here, then that will actually come off there, so we'll be fine. Right, top to bottom, stitch. Okay. Open that out, let's have a look. Yes, that fits nicely. So trim this off. Again, you can use your Rotary cutter and ruler. Trim it 
a little bit of that. Lovely. Right, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a piece at the end here because that's obviously a very straight piece. It doesn't go with what we're doing. So I'm simply going to switch the project around. So that's now on my right hand side. And I'm going to go for the green, which do I have any more of the green left? No, I don't. We'll cut a piece. I need to cut a small piece. Put that to one side there. Let's cut a piece. Two and a half inches, remember? Or again, up to you uh, what size you want to cut to. If you want to make them bigger, by all means do so. Okay, two and a half inches. Just check, see how we're getting on. I've lost um, YouTube, so um, I can't see any comments, but if there is any, I'll come back on later on and, and answer them. Or someone else will, that's more technically minded. Right, so we're just doing exactly the same as what we've done before. Obviously, we've got a, it looks like we've got a finished piece, but I want to add on a piece here because I don't like how straight that is. So I'm starting, as I said, I flipped it over to the, so it's on my right. And then I'm just going to do exactly what I did before and measure up and have a look. See if that's how I want it. Yes, it is. Placing it on. Little trim. I'm being quite um, overzealous with my cuts. They're very long compared to the project. That's because I've got the fabric to hand. If you want to be more conservative, then as I said, an inch either side, maybe an inch and a half, I'd say, just be safe.
Hello, you might be able to see me again now, you might even be able to hear me, uh, which would be quite super, wouldn't it? Uh, let's just log on and have a look. Okay. Right, so I'll wait for some people to join. Um, and then hopefully uh, you'll be able to hear me on the new stream. So let me know. Um, if you can't, then that's just that then, isn't it really? <laughs> I seem to have paused. Okay. Right, so uh, I've trimmed off the project. So let's switch you over. simple it's easy it's definitely something you can refer to and keep in your um, back pocket for if you need something quickly maybe you need to make something for uh, you could make these for a wedding you could have them in um, you know tones of white you could have them in a lovely sage and white depending on what the theme was you could have them for loads of things but obviously I've got this like this you don't have to have it so pointy you can have it straight in just strips that would be great for a beginner just strips don't forget that the first one is always face up uh, so that's how you start and then you can finish off if you don't like the straight like I did turning it around and starting again from the other side um, right so obviously we've got a few technical difficulties with the sound uh, what we'll do is I think we'll wrap up um, because I don't want you to just watch me and there'll be no sound, there's no point. Um, oh, YouTube is fine, apparently now. <laughs> oh, honestly. So what we'll do is I'll just give you an overview of the products we've got on and then we'll say goodbye. Um, and hopefully on Monday, when we come back again, uh, it's we're live at 10 o'clock, we will have the sound issue sorted out. So obviously there was gonna be some technical problems with the first episode, and I hope that you'll understand that and I hope that you'll tune in for the next episode as well. Um, so we've got the pens, as I said, uh, I'll just load up the site so we can have a look. They are on. Uh, three of these is 6.99, so you get the tape measure. Now, which one of these is mine now? I've picked up two. Right, this one is mine because it's got ink around the end. I knew I was going to do that. So you get all three. You get the knitting balls, you get the tape measure and you get the sewing machine. Um, I'll bring them in so you can see a bit closer. you've got the felt you've got the June Taylor mat uh, there's loads of stuff for you to have a look at if you missed the first live stream at the beginning 
We've made a, a lovely uh, hot pad or placemat, depending on what you want to do. And then we've made another one, which is a quilt as you go. So do have a look back on those. I did have to end that stream because of the sound. Uh, we'll just quickly check to make sure. Yeah, sounds are both okay now. So, but we'll we'll wrap up so that I we can get cracking on sorting out the sound for Monday. Uh, it's been an absolute pleasure to spend this morning with you. I'm sorry that we're finishing a bit early. That wasn't our intention, but we just need to make sure that everything's right. There is no point it, the sound coming in and out, and you're not going to enjoy it. So let's finish now, and we will see you. Uh, on Monday, 10 o'clock. The products will be loaded the day before, so on Sunday night the products for that show will be loaded. The products will be at the prices that they're going to be on the show. There's not any going to be any change. Everything's already at a good price. So if you wanted to have a look on the night before a show, around 7 o'clock, those products will be on there. Um, obviously there's a limited amount of what, whatever we've got. Um, so hopefully if you've seen anything you like, you've managed to grab hold of that. And I will see you. Thank you so, so much for joining me on this first So Crafting TV show. The website is www.sc-tv.co.uk. You can email us at hello at so crafty dash. No, it's not so crafty. Hello at sc-tv.co.uk. Um, and I hope to see you on Monday. Thanks again for joining me. Sorry about the sound issues. Uh, wasn't intentional and we will try again for next time and we'll see you on Monday. Bye!